Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Let's look here. We, we, we kind of left off last time. Paul finished the book of 2 Corinthians. Now, remember Paul was in Macedonia. Paul had gone, uh, we, need, we need the map. We need the map, please. Paul had gone into Macedonia. And while he was in Macedonia, Macedonia is a region. It's, it's, uh, there we go. Next one. There we go. Macedonia is a region not, with several cities. Here's the region of Macedonia. You've got Thessalonica up here, Philippi, uh, Amphropolis all up here, Berea. This, all, this, this is the Macedonian region up here. And Paul had left Ephesus and gone up into Macedonia. And that's where, remember, he, he was in Ephesus and wrote what? First Corinthians. And then he left there. We, we got Paul over ship and got him over to Macedonia. Stopped there long enough to write 2 Corinthians, all right? And, uh, and then because apparently word had come uh, that, he had, that his letters had been, this particular letter had been received, he journeyed from there down into Corinth and spent three months here. Okay? So here we, here we go. Um, chapter 20, verse 1. Remember, they just had the uproar in, the, in, the, in, the, in Ephesus and all this kind of stuff. And then um, it says, Now his uproar called, his disciples embraced and departed for to go into Macedonia. And while he was up there, he wrote the letter to 2 Corinthians. And when he had gone over those parts and given them much exhortation, he came into Greece. He came down into Greece, down into Corinth, okay? And, uh, uh, and he abode there three months. And when the Jews laid wait for him as he was about to go into Syria, now he was going to sail from Corinth over into Syria. But there was, he changed his mind because he felt like there were people waiting for him. And so he backtracks and comes back around here this way. All right. He backtracks up. Okay. All right. And, um, and when the Jews lay wait for him as he about to sell to Syria, he purposed to return through Macedonia. Now, we've got to stop because we've really already, we read one verse and Paul's writing a letter. Okay. So when he came down out of Macedonia into Corinth and spent three months here, this is when he writes the book of Romans, possibly the book of Galatians. But we know, he, at least we, we, you know, he wrote the book of Romans here. So we've got to stop. Aren't you glad we got one verse taken care of? Now we've got to stop again. This is the third longest book of Paul's writings. All right? Okay? And so Paul now, he's, he's, he's in Corinth. He's going to write a letter. And I don't have the outline. I didn't, I didn't email the outline until you, Belinda. So I'm sorry. I, I have it on my stuff. So we'll just have to, you know, deal with it. Actually, I don't have all of it. That's all right. I'll figure that out later. Amen, sirs. I don't know why I didn't save all of it. It was on there when I said, yeah, that's right. I got enough to get started. I get it. It'll be a while before we get to where I need that. All right. How many love Jesus? Amen. Amen. All right. Let's go to the book of Romans. Now, Paul did not start the church at Rome. As a matter of fact, Paul is very adamant about not building on another man's foundation but Paul felt um, with, with strong conviction that he needed to write to the church at Rome because, you know, we, we know this, that Rome uh, was the capital of the world, uh, of the, what we refer to as the known world. Um, Rome had taken over much of this whole region, was controlling it. And Paul felt the need to write to the church there, expressing some, and, and this is probably one of the best, best letters of doctrine in relation to uh, sin, justification from sin, righteousness being imputed and, and, and imparted to us. And that, well, that's not probably, it is the best. That's why Romans is so quoted. You got, you got people talk about taking, uh, witnessing with the Romans roadmap. Uh, you know, we quote Romans all the time. Uh, you know, um, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. All right? And so there's, a, you know, the Romans is a very, very crucial letter to the church, and that's why Paul took it upon himself to write to a church he did not start, but it was at the center of commerce, center of travel, center of church, you know, communications, that kind of, kind of thing. So Paul wanted to write this letter to the church at Rome. So he starts out with his, with his salutations. Let's look here. Uh, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the, what? 
Holy Scriptures. What were, were the Holy Scriptures Paul was referring to? Old Testament. I was listening to someone the other day, they were talking about how that um, we don't know our Bibles anymore. Our, our, our church that we came out of down in Greenville uh, this year, they're, they're, they're starting a campaign. One of the things they're going to do starting in, 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 in uh, September with their new campaign is no more scriptures on the overhead. Everybody bring your Bible. Bring a marker. Mark up your Bible. Read your Bible. Um, and, you know, we did that for a while. And uh, you know, sometimes I think we ought to go back to it because we, we need to know our Bible. When the writers of the New Testament wrote, they heavily, heavily quoted the Old Testament and refer to them as the scriptures. Then you got people coming along and saying, one, one famous preacher got up and recently said in the past few months, if we could just do away with the Old Testament, we wouldn't have any problems. And everybody loves him. They all think he's really cool. You know, that's because you got a weird hair doing skinny jeans don't make you cool or, or knowledgeable of the Bible. All right. But, you know, if we could just get rid of the Old Testament, we'd have all these problems in the church. Well, I'm glad they had it when Paul and uh, uh, James and John and Peter were all writing the New Testament scriptures because they all quoted the Old Testament and called it scriptures. Amen? <laughs> Didn't they? So, you know, people, people come along with some of the dumbest stuff. But, it, but people, people, oh, Yeah. Well, Paul didn't, Paul would probably rebuke them. He might cast the devil out of them. Which he had promised before by his prophets in the ho Holy Scriptures. Where were they promised? In the Old Testament. And Paul called them Holy Scriptures. Concerning his son Jesus Christ. Now, let me say this. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. But it's still scripture. And the revelation that we have, and, in the, and, I'll, and I'll, I always like to say this, unless the New Testament changes it, it's still in force. You've heard an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I say unto you, love thy enemy. Now see now, eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth has been superseded by the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church, by saying, I say unto you, love your neighbor. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Do you, you know, the Old Testament gave him the writing of divorce. And Jesus said, because of the hardness of your heart, you had the divorcement. I say unto you um, that it's because of the hardness of your heart this happened. You know, there's, just, there's things that, you know, Jesus said this. You know, how read you the law? Well, love the Lord, the Lord God with all the heart, all the soul, all the might, thy neighbor as thyself. Um, and Jesus said, yes, and on this hinge all the law and the prophets. So we don't have the big ten commandments. We got the law of love. But the law, listen. Understand this, all this hinge, all the law and the prophets. If you're motivated by love, then fulfilling all the law and the prophets won't be difficult. Isn't that right? Amen. Don't take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. If you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength, you will not take his name in vain. Right. So it's not that that's not a, that, that is not a valid commandment. It's that all the law and the prophets hinge on the law of love. And the ability to fulfill those law, all that law, is to be able, the ability to walk in the love of God, which has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. So it's not that it, the, the Old Testament has been negated. You've been empowered to actually fulfill it through a higher law and walk it out, whereas they couldn't do it before. Love thy neighbor as thyself. It takes the love of God to be able to love your neighbor as yourself. So God was not negating the law of the Old Testament by saying we got a higher law. He was empowering you to actually do it through a greater law. It's still Holy Scripture. Hello? He who looks on his neighbor's wife to lust after her, you know, thou shalt not commit adultery. Well, Jesus said, look, if you look on her just to look at her, you've committed adultery already in your heart. If you love your neighbor, you wouldn't do that. If you love your neighbor as yourself, you wouldn't want somebody going after your wife. Amen. 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 So the law of love did not, you know, abdicate the Old Testament law. It simply is the empowerment to do what that law said. 
Remember what, what, what Paul writes to the church. He said that the law was given as a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Right. And in Christ, what? We're able to do it. Right. Right. Not that those things aren't valid. Didn't get to the New Testament, get the law of love and say, homosexuality is no longer a sin because we have the law of love. We love everybody. No. That law, the love the Lord, number one, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength means that you honor him in obedience to his commandments. Amen. And there's the power in you through that law of love to do that. Amen. Somebody shout glory. 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 Amen. So people get it wrong. They think the law of love advocated everything else, did away with it. We just need to get rid of the Old Testament. Yet Paul and the other writers called those scriptures. Right. Paul even referred to as holy scriptures. Somebody eat that, ba 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 Make you speak in tongues, won't it? Amen. I say, won't it? All right. So, the, the, you know, which he promised before by the prophets and the Holy Scriptures. Concerning his son Jesus Christ, which was made the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness. Church. I, I know I'm, try, I'm, I'm trying to go through this. I'm not going to rush. What script, what spirit was it that declared Jesus Christ to be the Son of God with power? Spirit of holiness. You think God is any less concerned about people being holy because we're under the new covenant and under grace than he was before we got to this new covenant? Now, as a matter of fact, Jesus Christ was declared his Son with power through the spirit of holiness. And the Word of God says, be holy even as I am holy. God looks for holy people. And then some bozos come along and say, we're under grace. We don't, and I'm, I'm not, I love grace, but when you misinterpret it and misuse it and misapply its meaning, it becomes, it becomes false doctrine. When you, it's just like people going around saying, I can have what I say, and they start confessing somebody else's wife. Well, I got faith. I can have that woman. That woman. No, you can't. Because if the spirit of holiness was working in you, you wouldn't be lusting after somebody else's wife. That's good preaching. Amen. Isn't that right, Karen? <laughs> or husbands. Yeah, there you go. Come on now. But people come along and start teaching things and saying things like, you know, it doesn't matter because I'm under grace. I can do what I want to because I'm under grace. That doesn't apply to me because I'm under grace. And if I don't, if I work that way, it's a work. Well, did not the New Testament say in Ephesians, the second chapter, that we are created in Christ Jesus unto good works? W-O-R-K-S, works. James said, really interesting statement there. You know, be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. But he who, you know, look, go there, James chapter 1 real quick. Hold your place here in Romans. I'm preaching better than y'all are shouting. You know it's good. James chapter 1, verse 22. Uh, but be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth, he beholdeth himself, goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he is. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. Not the word, the work. This man is blessed in his deed. Everybody say, wow. Let me do a T.L. Osborne. Say that backwards. Wow. <coughs> Need my little wig on, okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> Notice he did not say he being, he being a doer of the word. He said he being a doer of the work. This thing about not doing works and not having any works, it's simply, when the Bible talks about not being saved by works, it's talking about you for trying to go out and, and do enough sacrifices, you do enough of this, you do enough penance, whatever it is, to get saved. But let me say this, if you're born again, you should be working like you, like the, uh, for the Lord. You should be honoring the Lord, and your actions and your activities should honor Him. Not going to get you into heaven, 
But you keep doing the wrong kind of actions and stuff long enough, you're going to get yourself in trouble, a heap yeah. of trouble. And start living a lifestyle that's, that's reprehensible to the Holy One. Amen. Do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength or not? Then you should not want to displease Him. Amen. If you really, see the law of love, it, see we always look for the out in us so we can do whatever we want to do. In the church as a general rule, when, when these kind of doctrines start floating through the church, it gravitates and draws people who are carnal. I'm just, just flat out, they're carnal. They want to cater to the flesh, and they look for an out for the flesh, and get all excited when they find out they don't have to do anything. Woo! It's like having a bunch of kids in the classroom and then telling them this balloon, water balloon day, and they all run out to the playground. They don't care what 2 plus 2 equals at that point. All they care about is smacking somebody with a water balloon. And we got a lot of Christians that are that way, that as soon as they can, get, they can, they can shut down any, anything on their side and just go get blessed, 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 no matter what they do, they run after it. And then they're just setting themselves up for failure is what they're setting themselves up. It won't show up right away. It won't show up this week. It won't show up next week, but it will show up. The man who's not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this man is blessed in his deeds. In his what? Deeds. Deeds. Let me give you another word for the word deeds. Work. Hello? Say hello. Are y'all there, y'all? Am I talking right about it now? Hallelujah. But Jesus was declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness. So if you love God, you're going to want to live holy and honor him. Moses showed up and got out there in the presence of God, and God said, take off your shoes. This is holy ground. Just got into his presence and said, this is holy ground. People say all these, people, I'm mad at God. I've heard people say that. You're an idiot. Who do you think you are? You said someone in our church one time to tell me they're mad at God and they think it's all right to be mad at God. Well, I beg your pardon. I ain't talking about your rose garden either. God's okay with me being mad at him. No, he's not. He redeemed you. He sent his son. He shed his blood. He's made provision for you. He's done everything. You know, how shall he with, who spared not his own son, not also with, also with him get freely give us all things? He's done everything he, possible to make provision for you so that you can live a life of victory and you're going to run around and get mad at God and it's okay? Hogwash. Tommy Rott, as Dad Hagen used to say. Bunk was the other thing he used to say. I'm mad at God. He, Dad Hagel said, I'd rather hear a donkey bray in a tin barn at midnight than hear such garbage as that. <laughs> going to get mad at God. If you love God with all your heart, soul, and strength, you're not going to get mad at God. He's perfect. He's holy. He is, he is perfection. There is no flaw in him. There is no reason on the, in the universe that you have the right to be mad at God. Well, I didn't get what I wanted. Oh, okay. Get mad at yourself then. You, wanted, you didn't do something right. But don't get mad at God. Now, back over here. And I kind of, kind of ventured out there, but this, it just kind of struck me that of all the spirits, you know, if you go read back in the Old Testament, there are seven different spirit names given to the Holy Spirit. Spirit of wisdom and counsel, the spirit of holiness. There's, there's different names given to him. I, I don't know them all right off the top of my head. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. And of all the things, the spirit of power, power and might, I believe it is. Is that right, Brother Bill? Yeah. Spirit of power and might. Notice that he was declared to be the Son of God with power. Well, it seems like according to the spirit of power and might, to me would be there. Now, spirit of holiness. There is something we're missing in the church, in the arena of holiness, <clears throat> that we need to get back to. And I'm not talking about beehive hairdos and burlap sack dresses and powder makeup all over you with, you know, that death powder they put on you. Now, I went to a white church, so they used white powder. 
Okay? And then when we come in there, they put that dusting powder all over, bath powder. And they, I mean, you talk about looking death warmed over three times. And they put a little bit of clear, glossy on their lip. And that was Jezzy. I mean, you may, you are a Jezebel. Hello, that's not that's not the holiness. Holiness is a, is a, is a, is is internal. Now it will show up in how you act and how you dress and how you conduct yourself. If you're living according to the spirit of holiness, it will show up in those other arenas. And if you're looking for a way to go do all those things, hello, I don't want to drink. I think, I, I, the Bible says that God gave them all the herbs of the field, smoking dopes, okay. I've got people, listen, I've had people in this church say that. They're not here now, but they were in the church. That all the herbs of the field were given by God, therefore it's okay to smoke dope. Really? Well, you know, I mean, you know, so let's go ahead, let's just take, let's just take the, all the opiates, you know? Let's take all the opiates and let's just shoot up some heroin for Jesus. Because <laughs> he, 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 he calls op uh, uh, poppies to be grown. Don't you all like poppy seed on your stuff? Don't ever have a drug test after eating a bunch of uh, uh, poppy seed buns. Right. It'll show up as an opiate d drug test. Yep. It sure will, you know. You just test the positive for drugs. I don't do drugs. I like poppy seed buns, but <laughs> yeah, they, they will actually show up in your blood test. Uh, as, as an opiate. So, <laughs> well, see, with, with that reasoning, you can say, well, God, then God created uh, uh, opium and God created heroin for us to use. Because poppy seeds are okay. You don't eat them in moderation. You can't eat a whole bag of them. You don't get high just eating a poppy seed bun. And people that put kind of all kinds of stuff on their buns, you know? If you love God with all your heart, soul, and strength, then you're going to want to conduct yourself in a way that pleases him. And he's holy. This is where grace shows up. Because in your power, you can't do it. His grace will empower you. Let me say this. The empowering grace of God is a cooperating empowerment. What do you mean? Well, if you go to Romans, the... <laughs> We're in Romans, aren't we? Second verse. <laughs> Same as the first. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Y'all remember hearing me the eighth I am, I am? You know, second verse. Same as the first. Oh, uh, anyway. How many times? It's... But in, in Romans, the eighth chapter, Paul writes to the church, and he says, the Spirit himself helpeth us. No, actually, King James says itself because of the, because of the rules of interpretation, because of the preceding... Um, Noun was, was genderless, so therefore it had, you know, the pronoun was to be match it. But it's the Holy Spirit. We know the Holy Spirit by other names and, and the descriptions. Was the Spirit himself. Helpeth our infirmities. Did not say takes over and fixes our infirmities. Helpeth our infirmities. Now we, we know that from, the, from the Greek, the Greek word helpeth means to take, it's three words actually put together, takes hold together with against. Notice that this, one, one of the definitions we get from the, the Greek paraclete, paraclete or parakletos in its form used in, in, when we translate comforter. But one of the things is he's our helper. Isn't that right? The Holy Spirit administers all the gifts of God to the church. Grace is a gift of God. It can be empowering grace. It can be strengthening grace. It can be sustaining grace. It can be favor. The primary definition that people use is favor, the un undeserved, unmerited favor. But I'm telling you, it's a deeper and stronger and broader meaning than just favor. When Paul said, my, you know, when Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for, for you, he wasn't meaning it favors on you. You know, you got favor on you. You're getting your teeth kicked in by the devil, but you got favor. No. Strengthening grace was made available to Paul. And he said, when I rejoice in my infirmities, the power of Christ is matured in me. I wanted the Lord to take it away. He empowered me to overcome. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church and said, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? 
I said amen. So Paul's already stated that, that our ultimate, uh, in, in our life, we always triumph. Okay. So we start looking, you know, the grace of God is a co-op. Everything God does, we have to cooperate with it. We're not, how many remember the old song? You got me dangling on a string. I remember that song? Old beach music song, got me dangling on a string. All right, some of y'all don't remember that. Does anybody remember that? Go look it up on YouTube, listen to it so you know what I'm talking about. All right. It's a cool song. It's a really cool song. Anyway, please don't let me drop. All right, anyway. God don't have you dangling on a string making you do stuff. Oh, yes, he's sovereign. He's like, you're not a puppet. You do have a free will. You have a choice between God and the devil. God told Joshua to tell, tell the Israelites, and, 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 and back over there, Joshua, choose you this day, death or life, blessing or cursing. As for me and my house, we'll choose life. Isn't that right? Over and over again, the, the choices are put before you. And so the grace of God that comes to work with us and cooperate with us and help us in whatever form, strengthening grace, sustaining grace, overcoming grace, um, you know, favor grace, favorable grace, it comes and cooperates with our obedience, our recognition of it, and acceptance of its work. But when, we, when it comes to aid us, we have to cooperate with it. Yeah. Jesus did not say, get in the bag and I'll pull you. Go study it. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Listen to what he says. For I'm going to do all the work. Is that what he said? No. He said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What happens when you're yoked? You're hooked up doing the same thing. And if you stop cooperating, it messes it up. Jesus didn't walk and drag you kicking and screaming down the road. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, meaning it's like you're a Shetland pony with a Clydesdale yoke together. As long as you'll walk with him and stay in tune with him, he'll carry the, he'll carry the load. But you stop and you'll stop the whole thing. He's not going to drag you. You're yoked together with the Lord. What, and what does the scripture tell us? I know I'm all over the place, but this is, we're not going to get out of Romans chapter 1 tonight. I can tell you that. <laughs> Actually, I don't think we're going to get out of verse 2. You're right, Karen. <clears throat> I had this awesome statement. I'm not going to carry your load for you. Help me, Lord. I had a really good statement there, too. Hey, did you know the Bible tells us in one place, do not be in, uh, uh, entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, some of you people out there think you can go do whatever you want to do, live however you want to live, and just do whatever it is, and, don't, and think you're not going to get entangled again in the yoke of bondage. And I got news for you. This is a warning. Do not believe that. Do not believe that. If you put yourself in certain positions, you're going to set yourself up. I know people all the time who, you know, they, they, they came and they got saved, got turned on to the Lord, got filled with the Holy Ghost, got excited about God, and then somewhere down the line they began to miss some of their sin. And then went and found people who told them their sin wasn't sin. And what happened? Over a period of time, they became entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Example, I, we do a guy back in, in our home church a number of years ago. Um, he'd been in drugs. Everything got saved. Turned on the Lord, came to the church. He was a minister in the church. I mean, but someone there was going through a rough place. And all of a sudden, the church started admitting. This guy had a key to the church and, and the... And the um, uh, doohickey. Code. Alarm code. Thank you. That's, I, I heard, I had to, alarm code. All of a sudden, equipment from the church, just, they come in church and the piano be gone. Speakers will be gone. 
No, no alarm went off. Nobody, no windows broken out. Nothing. Just equipment gone. Computers, copiers. So they put it, they went in the church, went and put in security cameras. Didn't tell anybody they did it. And lo and behold, the next time something was missing, they went back and looked at the tape and here's this guy. Now I'm telling you, I, I knew him. Got turned on to the Lord, got saved. As we say in Pentecostal church, he got saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Pray for him that it hold true to the end. They caught him. He was the one, he came in, unlocked the door, came in, set the code, went in, stole some stuff, went back out, we set the code, locked the door, and walked off, went and hogged it somewhere at some pawn shop. Why? Well, a little while before that, a couple months or three months or whatever, he, he was riding down the road and saw somebody hitchhiking stop and picked them up. And we picked the guy up, the guy's going through a hard time. Let me tell you something. If you do not keep things on track yeah. and don't stay fervent for the things of God and stay, let me say, I'm glad this one too, and stay submitted and respectful of your pastor. Yeah. Well, I don't agree with him anymore. Let me tell you something. You better stop listening to people on the, on the internet and stuff and superseding the place God put you. Amen. You're opening the door for destruction in your life. Amen. Can I get an amen from Brother Bill? Amen. <laughs> and the guy offered him some weed. And he, he, he took it. He took the hit. Smoked some. It, it felt so bad. Repented, you know, whatever. But then, he's still going through a rough place. See, you've got to continue to trust God in the rough places, not just when it's hunkadory and all the honeymoon stage. Amen. Married couples know this. The honeymoon stage doesn't last forever. Amen. Sometimes it don't last a week. I know what was somebody we heard about not too long ago. I mean, they got married on, you know, got married, and by like two days later, they were separated. And, you know, everybody posted, oh, y'all so went now, now, look, they got back together, got straightened out. But I'm telling you, two days later, they, the one came back from the honeymoon by themselves. They came back separately. Didn't he make it through the honeymoon? <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> and, you know, and everybody posted on their Facebook, oh, y'all look so good together. It's just so lovely. And they didn't know. They're down there fighting on the honeymoon. They won't know honey or mooning. Take that for however you want to take it. All right. Where was that? Oh, you, you've got to keep yourself forever for God. You've got to, you've got to stay with God. You can't, you can't let down your God. The enemy's going about looking for whom he may devour. <clears throat> and so then this guy, because he, he, starts, he starts smoking dope again. Hidden sin, hidden secret. Now let me tell you, God's dealing with him. God's dealing with him. How do you know? Because God's merciful. He's stealing from the church and hawking it and all this kind of stuff. Well, then, then he moves on to something. I, I forgot if it was coke, I mean, uh, cocaine or if it was crack. I forgot what it was he moved on to. He started doing that. Well, he didn't have enough money to support his habit. So what did he do? He started stealing the church stuff and hawking it. So he could go buy his drugs. It's a minister in the church. Hawking the church equipment. You talk about no fear of God? Are you crazy? <coughs> well, they called him with the camera. Police said, well, do you want to press charges? And the pastor said, no. They wanted to restore him. You know, give him an opportunity. Not, you know, obviously lost his key, lost his, you know, they wanted to try to help him. And it wasn't a week or so later. Um, now, let me tell you how bad he got. He walked right at people in broad daylight, pull out a gun and rob them. We went over to a little town close to this, our, our, our place there, about 10 miles away. Went into a church, held the pastor at gunpoint to rob the church from, of his offerings. Ended up shooting the pastor. Now let me tell you how, what, you're talking about being entangled again with the yoke of bondage. He's, he's begging the pastor to pray for him. Tell him, I'm a minister. I, I, I don't know, I can't help doing this. He said, I'm sorry. I said, pray for me. Pray for me. But he had to have the drugs. Why? Because he became entangled again. I, I got on this one because of the yoke, but it's good. Because of the yoke of bondage. 
Got in his car, drove, drove back to the bigger city about 10 miles away. Police chased him. Tried to get back to our old home church. <laughs> it's all on television. Here he comes, driving up down the road. Hops out of the car, is running to try to get the church. Police chasing him down. They're arrested. Got the television camera on him. I'm a minister. I'm a minister. <laughs> See, in his spirit, he knew wrong. But somewhere in there, he didn't stay yoked with the Lord. He let himself become entangled again with the yoke of bondage. It's so important. I said it's so important to be yoked with the Lord and stay yoked with the Lord. That's why, I, that's why this message of, of you don't have to do anything, it's okay to do anything you want to do, is simply to me, it's an open door to become entangled again. You're not going to do it the first time. Let me tell you something. Can I just say something? You go out to a restaurant tonight, and you pick up, and you order a glass of Chardonnay, and you drink it with your meal. You're not going to go home and be an alcoholic tomorrow. But give yourself six months or a year. Back when you, before you got saved, you used to, you used to drink all the time. Give yourself a little time and keep doing that. And you might even repent for doing it tonight. But then a couple months later, Somebody, some of my friends of yours that aren't Christians invite you out to dinner and you, because you work together or you live in the same neighborhood and you think, well, I have a chance to witness to them. They order wine, you order wine because you want to look cool. And really, it's not that bad anyway. You know, Jesus turned the water into wine. Next thing you know, you're going to the store to buy stuff and you run into the pastor and I see you buying your wine. Oh, yeah. More than once. I don't say anything. You can see it all over their face. What? Busted! <laughs> Thought you were going to get away. Here's pastor walking right in. You're in the line. You're trying to hide it. You're trying. It's kind of hard to hide the big thing. <laughs> yeah, the box. You know? 90 proof. No, it's not, no, it's not 90 proof. I'm just joking. What's done in secret will be shouted from the housetop. But all of a sudden now, you know, you're looking for ways to get back to where you came out of. Because you're, you're dissatisfied. I'm going to tell you why you're dissatisfied with the things of the Spirit. Because you have unyoked yourself from walking in step with Jesus. That means you lost your salvation, but you're not hooked up and walking with him how he's walking. And you've gone over and gotten yoked back up in that old yoke that you liked or were familiar with, and it's a yoke of bondage. And it's going to take you a different direction. Hello? I mean, I remember one time years ago, I walked into a store, and the, <clears throat> the, 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 the wife of her husband, one of the ladies was a member of our church, but he, he did, he'd come and visit. Nice guy. Just wouldn't serve the Lord. Really like him. You know, just a nice guy. But he wouldn't serve the Lord. She had big, a couple of big old Colt 45s. Not the little ones, the big ones. And she starts stuttering and everything. Did I say anything? <laughs> Didn't say a word. You know, Didn't get up in the next service and preach about buying Colt 45 for your husband. I mean, if I never said, this is the first time I ever said anything about it. It's been 20 years. <laughs> You know? But she's just a sputtering and a stuttering trying to explain why she's buying it. He's not saved. He drinks. You know? Of course, I'm thinking, well, make him go buy his own. You know? If he wants to drink, make him buy his own. Don't you go out and buy it. But, you know, people, people make choices. That's fine. I, I didn't condemn her. Didn't try to make You don't have to explain to me. Now, I'm not saying she would be entangled again in the yoke, but I'm telling you, people do stuff and they start getting, they, they, they won't walk out holiness. And they, listen, we all get frustrated. Yeah. I know we got, I got, I'm going to try to wrap this up because we got a baby shower. We all go through tough places. All kinds of, Satan's trying to get you down. Right. Satan's trying to crush you. Satan's trying to destroy your walk with the Lord. And he keeps coming here and keeps coming here and he keeps just nipping at you. Paul got frustrated and said, Lord, remove this from me. Three times he did it. And the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you. Not to just put up with it, but 
the strength of God is made perfect in your inability to deal with this yourself. Amen. We all deal with difficult situations. Like Brother Hagin, I was just told, uh, 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 ser uh, sermon of Brother Hagin, Shannon had it on her, her, her iPad today. We were, we were in the kitchen cooking. And uh, he said, hey, I had a man come to me one day and said, Brother Hagin, I want you to pray for me. He said, what for? He said that I won't have any more trouble with the devil. He said, what you want me to do? Pray that you die? Because the only way you're not ever going to have any more trouble with the devil is you die. Well, no, I don't want to die. Well, then you're not, you, then you're not going to be able to get out of having trouble with the devil. You have to learn how to overcome. And the way you overcome, number one, you got to know who your enemy is. You got to know how to win. Don't go and get entangled with the past. That's the thing. Remember, we preached at the beginning of this year. Uh, Egypt just ain't all that. Y'all remember that? And the Bible said that the that the Israelites, had they had opportunity, would have returned. 400 years, they cry out for deliverance. And 30 days later, they want to go back. Looking for an opportunity. Instead of like the New Testament, the, the prophets refused to be delivered because they were looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. You got the Israelites coming out of Egypt after 400 years, and they're looking for a way to go back and make brick. Because it didn't all go hunkadory. Didn't go quite like they wanted it. Pastor says stuff you don't like. Guess what? My pastor says stuff I don't like. And I have to learn to, to, to receive that, to get corrected, to get straightened out. Amen? So I can continue to grow. Amen. I remember, and I, <coughs> last story. <coughs> Anyone will close, pick up here next week. All right? I remember, I, I've told this story before, I'll tell it again. Uh, Janie and I were, were in the church in Greenville, and, and um, you know, I got real spiritual. What it was, I was hurt. Some things that happened, I didn't get to a position that I wanted to be in at the time. I was hurt. I was offended. Now, I would never have admitted it before, but I'm admitting it now. I was, I was offended. And so I went to the pastor and said, nope, we're really tired, kind of worn out. We're just going to start taking Wednesday nights off. Just for a little while, just kind of, you know, kind of get a win, get everything. He just said okay at the time. So, guess what came on Wednesday nights back then? Eight o'clock. Ding, 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 ding. Bang the P.I. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, you know, Ferrari. Love Pagnum, Pagnum Mia. Magnum P.I. <laughs> Pagnum P.I. Oh, Lord. And we, we did have back then, we, we, they had come out with VHSs that you could record with. Not much before then, very, right around that time. I mean, they would still had Reggie, Reggie Vision out. They had beta version and not just VHS. You had either one. Yeah. Yeah. Bill, Brother Bill remembers the beta players, don't you? Oh, yeah. All right. So about oh, a couple months this goes by. And we, yeah, what happens? What happened? I really enjoy staying home on Wednesday nights. Getting off work, coming home, kicking up, getting a shower, getting some supper. Janie could cook. If she didn't, her mom was cooking. Because we lived in a house that was split into apartments. And the upstairs was us. But her downstairs was her mom. We could go there and get supper. Her mama can cook. Fried chicken, some collards. And I'm talking, you know, boiled potatoes. Hallelujah. Homemade buttermilk. Lard biscuits with some gravy. Hallelujah. <laughs> some rudel bakers. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Anybody, anybody hungry yet? Yeah. All right. And so my pastor came to me one day. He said, Ed. Yes, sir. Uh, when are you going to start coming back to church on Wednesday nights? Well, you know, we're busy. You know, we're on busy on Monday. I mean, we're just so busy all during the week. We just need Wednesday nights off. He said, what are you doing on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday you can't do on Wednesday? I mean, you can't. We do it on Wednesday. That you can't get done on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or Friday. And I just kind of went. I didn't like it. You know what didn't like it? My flesh didn't like it. My flesh didn't like it because it was enjoying staying home. 
<clears throat> and I wasn't real happy he had challenged me on that. But if you'll learn to keep a humble heart, God can straighten you out. And, and, and about 15 seconds after you said, because I, I was not happy. I'm, all I'm thinking about is, man, I'm going to miss Magnum. <laughs> I'm serious. Rhema grad. We're talking about a, a Rhema grad. Got my Rhema Bible training center certificate hanging on the wall. And I looked at him and I said, Pastor, you're right. I'll talk to Janie. And the next Wednesday we were back. I'm going to tell you something. Can you, can you imagine what I was thinking about the whole service? What's Magnum doing? Yeah. I sat there. <clears throat> you talk about a struggle to stay engaged in a service. We're only talking just a few weeks of letting yourself become entangled again. But you know what? We, we, we made the commitment, and it didn't take but just a, f a few weeks of going back on Wednesdays to where Mag Magnum wasn't important anymore. But my pastor had to speak to me and really, really in, in, a, in a, a gentle way correct me about what I was doing and the decision I was making, and I'm glad he did. Because we could have gone down the whole p wrong path had we not listened. And we listened. Yeah, we listened, made correction. And it was just all because I got offended about something. It was hurt. Folks, Brother Hagen had somebody on his staff got offended about something and left his ministry. One of the most important cogs in the wheel at Raymond today still. And this, this person told us in, in teaching the, the students. Left the ministry for two years. Finally came to a sense that he's made a big mistake. Comes back, talks to Pastor Hagen, tries, you know, I need a job back, I'll do whatever. He says, well, we'll look up and talk to Dad. <clears throat> Dad says, and then they finally find a job for him to do around the ministry just to get him back involved. But Dad said, I'm going to talk to him first. He says, send him in here. So he comes in, he says, didn't you let him sit down? Took his finger, pointed at him, said, there are things I could not do because you left me. End of conversation. He got offended over something and stopped Brother Hagen from being able to fulfill parts of his ministry because he was walking in an offense. And don't think, had he not got that right and dealt with that and corrected that, that he wouldn't have had to answer to that to the Lord. But everybody just runs off to another church. And, oh, praise the Lord. We just love you. You're just wonderful. Da, 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 da. Pats them on the back, puts them in some position, lifts them up, tell them how great they are, and then boom, that thing gets kind of pushed under the rug and they never come back and deal with it many times. And the whole time, something God had that, was, that he needed done doesn't get done. And when we stand in heaven, there's going to be a big screen TV. And you're going to get to see it if you don't get it right. And that's not to make people afraid. But at the same time, we need to stay yoked with the Lord and not in the yoke of bondage. Amen? All right, I'm going to stop there. I, I, I really, I'm so far over here, I could spend another hour right here. Anybody get blessed out of this? How could you get blessed out of that? Because it'll help keep you on the right path. Amen. All right? We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.